Fox Sports. We are With one week left in the season, your Rangers hope to build on some encouraging signs from this run of eight wins in their last nine games. Many of the younger players continue to improve and build confidence at the major league level. Odor, Sardinius, Rua, just to name a few whose time here has been invaluable. We've seen the reemergence of Neftali Feliz and the emergence of tonight's starter, Derek Holland. The final homestand begins with a positive nod to the future. The Rangers welcome the Houston Astros to Globe Live Park next. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest. Is presented by AT&T Universe TV. Now the Rangers back home at Globe Live Park in Arlington. The final seven games of the 2014 season. Tonight it's the first of three as they host the Houston Astros. And welcome in everyone along with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Delighted you can join us for this Monday night of Ranger baseball. And the last Monday of the season starting tonight, it's... Uh, going to be quite a night out here because Derek Holland is on the hill and he has been outstanding trying to bridge between 2014 and 2015 with a positive move. Well, he's definitely done that, Buzz. He had to work extremely hard just to get back on the mound before the season ended. He worked hard enough to accomplish that and it's paid off for him and it's certainly paid off for the Rangers. I don't think we needed to see this to know what we've missed not having Derek all season long. He was a guy that you would pretty much pencil in for 15 wins before the season started. But these four outings have been terrific. He hasn't given up more than one run in any one of them. He's pitched seven innings in three of them. He's had pretty much his best stuff. Well, looking for uh, any kind of positive uh, result from the pitching this year for the Rangers, Derek Holland certainly fills that bill. As a matter of fact, probably the most positive that they have had. And in that list of uh, pretty good pitchers in Ranger history, Derek Holland right there among the uh, top in Rangers franchise history. So Derek tonight uh, taking on the Houston Astros, his next to the last start. Wilder Rodriguez, the 31-year-old, getting a chance to perform in front of his father here at Globe Life Park. Starting lineup coming up for you right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Baseball on Fox Sports Southwest. It's brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer, the Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event, now playing at a Ford dealer near you. By AT&T U-verse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT, mobilizing your world. And by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. A gorgeous, comfortable evening here at Globe Live Park in Arlington. Derek Holland getting set to make his neck to the last start of uh, 2014. And Derek uh, has done a great job in the first four starts that he has made. And uh, as always, uh, since he has come back, riding uh, Briggs back there on the uh, back of the mound to remind him of uh, the late Briggs Brady, who passed away that he befriended in the hospital when Briggs was uh, was sick. Back of the mound and Derek uh, had had it on his shoes and just a, a very very touching moment when Derek Holland did that the first time and ever since it has been a fixture and uh, very compassionate man Derek Holland. Let's take a look at the Astros lineup that uh, Derek will face tonight. Robbie Grossman leads off. He's playing in left. Jose Altuve, the league leading hitter, is batting second. Then it's Chris Carter, the first baseman. Dexter Fowler plays center. Jake Marisnik is in right. The DH tonight is Alex Presley. Matt Dominguez plays third. Max Stasi is the catcher. And Jonathan VR bats ninth and plays short cut. And for the Rangers, it's Derek Holland. We'll take a look at the Sonic report on Derek Holland. He's 1-0. and The Rangers have not scored for him. About one run per nine innings while he's pitched. His ERA is great. He's only walked three batters. They all came in the second start, in his third start. Fourth start, I should say. 22 strikeouts, only three walks. Last season against Houston, he pitched very well. Combine what he did against him last year and the way he's pitching right now should be a good game for Derek. And Derek Holland fires strike one in the switch hitting outfielder Robbie Grossman. Grossman, a 227 average. One and one. Grossman, a half dozen home runs, 37 RBI. 84, very comfortable degrees, a very light breeze drifting in from left field. And Grossman fouls the next pitch out of play. One ball and two strikes. Astros come in having won their last two ball games. They are uh, some five and a half games ahead of the uh, the Rangers in the standings. That pitch fouled away to the right. Astros at 69 and 87. The Rangers come in at 62 and 93. And both these teams on the upswing here in the last couple of weeks. Rangers, of course, have. One eight of nine. Holland to the wine. And back to the plate. Tried the breaking ball and just missed with it. Tough one to lay off right there, but Grossman has a good eye at the plate. Very difficult one to lay off of. It was almost a strike. Now the 2 2 pitch. And that is inside. Well, three balls and two strikes. Grossman trying to get aboard to start things off for the Astros. He'll be followed by Jose Altuve. Holland with a payoff pitch. And we will try it again. You mentioned Grossman hitting just 227, but since he was called up for this uh, last time uh, back in July, he has hit better than 280. A good job at the top of the order getting on base. That on base percentage rising noticeably. Fouls back the next pitch. Well, one thing one thing Grossman also does is walk. When you look at his 227 overall average, his on base percentage is 100 points higher mm -hmm. because of the walk rate that he has. He's only played 97 games, had 339 at bats, but he's walked 53 times. And a drive to right center field, falling in a hurry, and is down for a base hit. And it's Martin over to cut it off, and Grossman, eight pitch at bat, able on the eighth pitch to uh, slam it, make that a nine pitch at bat. Able to slam that ball into right center for a leadoff single. And let's 
take a look at the Rangers' defenses delivered to you tonight by the New Braunfels Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, you saw the Onus Martin in center. He is flanked by Brian Rua in left and Jake Smolinski in right. Adam Rosales at first. And then the three amigos, as uh, Tim Bogart called them, both door and Sardinius up the middle. Field there, Rodriguez at third base. But Centurinoski is catching tonight. And we'll talk more about that uh, story with the middle infielders. Altuve bunting the first pitch and fouled it off. It was a long at bat for Grossman, unlikely to be a long at bat for Altuve. He doesn't <laughs> waste any time. He hits the first thing he sees up there. He's not going to strike out very much. He's only struck out 52 times. He's been up 637 times. He doesn't walk a lot. His on-base percentage is not that much higher than his batting average, 380, 345. If he sees something that he likes early in the count, he's not waiting. And when he gets decent pitches to hit, he won't foul them off like Grossman did. He'll put them in play. Yeah, if I were Derek Holland, I would have been pleased if he'd gotten the bunt down, to be quite honest. Yeah, me too. It would have been a sacrifice <laughs> bunt. Yeah. Would have bunted right straight to first base and would have got him out. Yeah, I'll take him out and gross me at second. Yeah. Any day. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when he bunts, you eliminate the double. Or you would hope you would eliminate the double. Put it that way. Now, Tuve at 345. That is uh, best in the American League. Best in baseball, as a matter of fact. 0-1 the count. Double play grounder. Odor, Sardinius, back to Rosales. 4-6-3. Thank you very much. I take that back about the bump. <laughs> well, that's a pretty nifty double play with two young middle infielders like Odor and Sardinas. You look like veterans turning at that time. Odor is only 20. What's Sardinas? 21? 21, yeah. A 20-year-old and a 21-year-old making that play with a fast runner going down to second and a quick runner going to first. Very nicely done. Sardinius going back behind the bag. You don't see a shortstop do that move very often. The bag is kind of a buffer between he and Grossman. So, two outs now. Base is empty, and Chris Carter takes strike one. Carter tied for second in baseball with 37 home runs. 87 driven in. And Holland working him on the fist ahead of the count, 0-2. Rangers go into that uh, overshift on the infield. Three Rangers on the left side of the diamond. They're the home run leaders we were talking about in the American League. Nelson Cruz leading at 39. The Odor, Sardinius, and Rodriguez all on the left side of the Ranger infield. Holland with a 1 2 pitch. Cleared off some guys from the far end of the uh, Astros dugout that were back beyond the screen. Right down there at the, the steps going down. Yeah. Got him swinging. There's that breaking ball down and in. Carter didn't lay off. He couldn't make contact. No runs a hit. Nobody left. The double play took care of the leadoff. Piece in. After half inning, the Astros left with the Rangers coming up.
the scoreless ball game. Rangers coming to bat. And Southwest Airlines will bring you the starting lineup for the Rangers tonight. Leonis Martin is always leading things off. Adam Rosales is batting second. Then it's Rubnet Odor. Adrian Beltre DHing tonight. Jake Smolinski hitting fifth, plays right field. Ryan Rua is in left. First career home run yesterday was a game winner. Luis Sardinas at short. Robinson Torinos is catching. And Wilder Rodriguez is batting ninth and playing third. Check the Sonic scouting report for Nick Tropiano. 1-0 in two starts with a 270 ERA. He's pitched five innings in both of his starts. He had a very good year in AAA, 9-5 with a 303 earned run average and a great opponent's batting average of only 202. Last three minor league seasons, a strikeout per inning. Pretty impressive. And the first pitch of the game to Leonis Martin is in for strike one. Martin a 279 average with seven home runs, 39 driven in. Sinking fastball and it's one and one. And the scouting report we got on Tropiano is that's uh, that's his primary weapon, that uh, good moving fastball. Doesn't throw overly hard, low 90s, but great movement. This is outside, and it's 2-1. and one. Also an excellent changeup. Yeah, the combination's getting him a lot of strikeouts. There was a changeup that was inside, and uh, Leonis Martin hit it right off the end of the bat. No, it's two and two. Tropiano from uh, Stony Brook College, the uh, same institution that uh, produced Joe Nathan. Two-two offering. A full count. No, well, Martin trying to get aboard here to start things off for the Rangers. Adam Rosales, the first baseman, will follow. Payoff pitch. Left center field, Fowler on the move into the alley and makes the catch for out number one. And second, the first baseman, number nine, Adam Rosales. And before Rosales comes up, let's take a look at the uh, progressive Astros defense. He's on Dexter Fowler in center. He is flanked by Grossman in left and Dave Marisnik in right. Chris Carter at first, Altuve and VR up the middle. Matt Dominguez at third. Max Stasi is catching for Nick Tropiano. So one away, Adam Rosales. Had a great road trip. He's got a seven-game hitting streak coming into play tonight, and he takes strike one. That's a career best for Rosales. Jack of all trades, and he's mastering most of them. <laughs> he's been incredible. Down on the count here, no balls and two strikes. You won't see many right-handed throwing first basemen throw the ball to second base on a double play attempt or a force out better than he does. He rears back right over the top and throws it as hard as he can. Yep. And he's done it quite accurately, too. And he's done it both in front and in back of the runner at first. I, You know, the same... Same kind of, uh, same kind of approach. That's fouled out of play to the right. You know, a lot of times, especially a right-hander like you're talking about, Tom, well, you'll see him get the ball behind the runner and have a, have no problem throwing. But all of a sudden, you put him in front of the runner where he has the runner to deal with. He might uh, kind of take a little bit off and throw him a sinker. Yeah, he his his throw straight over the top like that is straight as a string, and it's got something on it too. One ball and two strikes here. It's that seven game hitting streak we were mentioning, a 357 average over those seven games. A double in there and a couple of RBI. Tropiano with a 1 2 pitch. Rosales on the just completed road trip went 8 for 25. That's a 320 mark. Another one, two. Dominguez, nice stab to his left, able to come up and fire across the diamond. Two gone. Yeah, Dominguez is a nice, solid 
third baseman defensively. He's got a, you know, average range, but whatever he gets to, he catches, and he's got a strong, accurate arm to go along with it. He hasn't quite developed as, as a hitter yet. Mm -hmm. He's got some power. He's only hitting 215 after some pretty good time, pretty good experience in the major leagues. I think they're looking for him to be a little bit more than a 215 hitter if he wants to be a regular third baseman. Now two up, two away here for the Rangers, and Rugnet Odor now steps to the plate. I think they're probably hoping that the patience that they're in position to give their players will work out for Dominguez just like it did for Chris Carter. Yeah. And Chris Carter was always a high strikeout, low average guy. They stuck with him last year, and he hit, hit some home runs, knocked in some runs, and he's expanded on that this year. One of the major league's leading home run hitters. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be a league leading home run hitter, but you have to think he's potentially a 260 hitter. One hop flagged down by Altuve. He throws out his counterpart. No, well, Odor robbed by the opposite second baseman. Three up, three down. Rangers gone in the first after one. No score. A scoreless ball game as we head to the top of the second inning. Derek Holland will face the middle third of the Astros order. And Dexter Fowler goes after that first pitch and fouls it off to the right. Fowler, switch hitting center fielder. He's pretty much settled into that cleanup spot for the Astros now. 273 average, eight home runs, 35 driven in. Up the middle into center field, and Fowler with a leadoff single. He is aboard here in the second. Now Jake Marisnik coming up, and uh, before he steps in, let's welcome in Jim Knox. Jim? I appreciate it, Buzz. Nice crowd here tonight. Rooting the Rangers on, huh? Ready to go? There we go. All right, before the game, the Rangers talked about, and Albertsons, you know, throughout the season, donated donated money for every home run hit throughout the season by the Texas Rangers before the game. Albertsons presented a big check to Eastern Hills out of Fort Worth, Eastern Hills High School, a big check for their Just Keep Living programs to find out more about Just Keep Living and other outstanding programs that Texas Rangers are involved in. Log on to TexasRangers.com slash foundation. Got the double play here. Buzz. No, no, almost. <laughs> almost, you're right, Noxie. And just pulled Adam Rosales off the bag. The throw from uh, Sardinius. Well, the kids turned a double play that was a beautiful double play in the first inning, and they missed an opportunity at one this inning that should have been a little more, even more routine. Perfect feed. Sardinius' throw just sails, and Adam couldn't quite keep his foot on the bag. That's, that's one they should make. The first one was well above average. That one was a little bit below average. 
You know, it looked like Adam expected that ball to have a little more steam on it coming to him too. Where he was trying to time it so he caught the ball and had still had his foot on the bag, but didn't have as much velocity on it as he thought. His throw, his foot's a lot closer to the base than I thought it was when you watch it in real time. But it's definitely off the bag. Yeah, he didn't really have his foot on the bag and stretch out with his left right. leg quite as much as he could have, I guess. Yeah. And I, I think if, he, if he'd known that was going to be, you know, that throw was going to end up that far down the line, he probably would have come off and tried to catch it and make the tag. Yeah, he, I think he was anticipating a better throw. But maybe the throw was still was good enough. Yeah. So one out. And Marisnik, the uh, runner at first now. Alex Presley, the DH, is up there. One ball and one strike. A snap throw over and almost, Holland almost got Marisnik leaning. Or caught him flat-footed. Either way you want to look at it. Marisnik, a pretty good base runner. And they got him picked off here. Rosales, a strong throw down there. And, Tom, there's what you were talking yeah. about. And that, that was the inside throw that you were talking about. But, you know, he, he throws the same way he would throw a ball from shortstop. And so he's got the quick feet to get the right angle. Going to come toward Derek as he catches the ball. Now he's got the angle, and there's the good, strong, accurate throw, and there's the tag. So they didn't get the double play, but they got the out anyway. No, base is empty two away now. The pitch to Presley. Holland jammed him pretty well. It's one and two. Yeah, that's just a double play that took a couple of pitches in between yeah. the outs. No damage done. No. Presley coming back after some uh, rib cage problems earlier in the, in August, almost, uh, most of that month, working his way back to uh, to help in this club. Presley wasn't hitting much at the beginning of the year, but he's another guy, kind of like Grossman, who's been playing pretty well, mm -hmm. hitting almost 300 with 180 at bats over the last 50 plus games. Reaches out and hits a little looper out to shortstop and Luis Sardinia takes care of that. So again, Derek Holland gives up a leadoff single, but faces only three hitters in the inning. After an inning and a half, Rangers nothing, Astros nothing. your photo for a chance to have it shown on one of our upcoming broadcasts. And that, of course, is thanks to the good folks at AT&T. Just use hashtag Southwest Fan Photo, and your photo might be selected to be aired during one of our upcoming telecasts. 
show you uh, tonight's selection a little bit later on in the ballgame. Adrian Beltre to start things off here in the Rangers' second. Scoreless game. Astros with the only two hits. They have been both leadoff singles that have been erased by one manner or another, and Adrian takes strike one. Beltre, third in the American League with a 325 average. Make that fourth in the American League. Tropiano back to him. And there's a fastball for strike two. Don't see Adrian take two fastballs for no. strikes very often. Just had a hard time picking it up. First time he's seen Tropiano, obviously. And he has gone on three pitches, three fastballs, and Beltre takes two and swings through the last one. Boy, I bet that hasn't happened this year. Three straight fastballs for a strikeout. If it has, it's only been a couple times. And chalk that up to uh, not having seen the young man before. That's what I'd say. Well, one gone here is Jake Smolinski now to face Tropiano. Jake hitting at 355 with two home runs. Both those home runs coming on this last road trip. Check swing, and he went around. Couldn't stop his swing in time, and count of 0-1. Smolinski, 11 runs driven in to go along with those two round trippers. 3.08, the average on the road. Uh, six games that he played in. Smolinski came back off the disabled list on the uh, 16th, so we could go tomorrow. There are the numbers we were talking about. Three home runs, or two home runs, and six RBI in those six games. In the air to right center field. That pushes Marisnik back. And plenty of room in front of the track. He makes the grab. That is out number two. Now Ryan Rua will face Tropiano. Tropiano, just a fifth-round selection by the Astros back in 2011 out of Stony Brook. And I say just, a, you think a guy that makes it to the major leagues in, in fewer than three years that he would be a, a very high draft choice, first round or second round, and that wasn't the case with Tropiano necessarily. I think when you look at a guy like Tropiano and you say, well, this guy's really good. Why was he a fifth round draft choice and not a second round draft choice? It probably boils down to velocity. He mm -hmm. probably didn't light up a radar gun. Yep. And it's unusual that a right hand pitcher would go in the first two rounds if he doesn't have a mid 90s fastball. But sometimes a college pitcher with a good slider and a good changeup who really knows how to pitch ends up being a lot better than where he was drafted. And I guess that's hard to predict when you're out scouting college players. You get a little bit enamored with a, with a radar gun. Ooh, I got sawed off and it's a little dribbler out to second. On to first and that is it for the Rangers in the second. Three up, three down again. Six straight now. Retired by Tropiano. We'll move on to the third. We are scoreless at Globe Live Park in Arlington.
Well, top of the third and a scoreless ball game. Astros uh, with the only two hits of the game. Gary Collin facing the bottom third of the Astros order, and that means it's starting with Matt Dominguez, who fouls back that first pitch. Dominguez, as we have been talking about, hitting just 215, but he has 16 home runs and 54 driven in. Some pretty good power numbers for the young third baseman. Holland back with the 0-1. Whoa. Trying to get that slow hook coming in That's there. That's not but, got uh, there. Alfonso Marquez, the home plate umpire. No. Somebody stitched, stitched his hand down to his side. <laughs> Two and one now. Well, that happens to umpires, I know. Sometimes they get that thumb caught in their pocket and they can't get it out to yeah. throw up that right hand. Yeah, and they're afraid to just raise their left hand, I guess. Yeah. The center field, and the owners Martin tracking this one. One gone. Bill Holland retires the leadoff man for the first time tonight in an inning. Max Stassi coming up, and let's take time here for a Mazda game break with John Radigan. John. All right, John, thank you. Max Dossi, 364 average in uh, limited playing time since being called up from AAA on the 2nd of September. Holland misses inside. One ball, one strike. Stassi, no home runs. A couple driven in. Our American League Central update for you. The Tigers, two games up after that Kansas City loss in the suspended game. Tigers uh, early losing, and the Royals in the uh, second game are winning that. And Stassi thrown out by Rodriguez. Good there, the first ground ball that he's had to deal with in, this evening. Handles that ball. So two outs for BR. Yeah, another start for Derek, his fifth start, where he's pounded the strike zone. 31 pitches, 23 of them have been strikes. Yeah, I don't, I can't remember a, a streak like this for Holland, no matter how well he was pitching, where he was this consistently in the strike zone. No, he's it's, it's terrific. I mean, you know, we've seen him dominate. There's a little pop-up on the bunt. Rodriguez coming down, makes a basket catch. And that is it for VR. So a very quick and tidy one, two, three, third inning. After two and a half of the inning, Rangers, nothing. Astros, nothing. On Fox Sports Southwest.
MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. You can enjoy live look-ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts, the MLB.tv game of the day, and a whole lot more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. The Rangers come to bat here in the bottom of the third. It will be the bottom third of the Ranger order. Luis Sardinius, Robinson Chirinos, and Wilder Rodriguez to face Nick Tropiano. Sardinius, a 269 average. Tropiano to the plate with strike one. And Tropiano doing a pretty good job of pounding the strike zone also. Well, he popped that change up in there for a strike on the first pitch. And he came back with a fastball and had it in a pretty good spot. Nothing in two to Sardinius. At least in his last six ball games, lighting it up pretty well. 368. Saw him yesterday. Remember out in uh, Anaheim, slap, him, slap a couple of balls the opposite way with authority. There's a looper out to short right at VR for out number one. Well, he's fooled by the changeup. But he almost got himself a base hit if he hit a little higher. Able to put it in play anyway. Well, that is the first out. And Robinson Torinos will step in. Torinos steadily on the rise. That average now to 241. A six game hitting streak coming into play here tonight. He takes strike one. That is a career best for the Ranger catcher. And the six games uh, goes back to the time that he was back in the lineup after suffering the next stiffness. Missed uh, ten games with that uh, rough spot in the neck. It uh, occurred when he got hit by successive foul tips in the mask. Said his neck just felt like somebody had kind of nailed it up and got really stiff on him, and he had couldn't turn from side to side very well. And that's a little tough if you're trying to hit and catch, not to be able to turn your head. That was chopped foul, and the count stays at no balls and two strikes. Tropiano back to Torinos. Brown ball by Dominguez this time into left field. And there's the first base runner, the first base hit of the night for the Rangers. So one on, one out, and Wilder Rodriguez will come up. And there are his mother and father, Guillermo and Francis. Rodriguez. They're so, they're so nervous right oh, now. Man. <laughs> you yeah. can see it on their faces. His father uh, had had a chance to see him one time this year at Double A, but this is uh, the first time they've ever seen him at the big league level. Well, that, that's got to be. Well, you talk about busting your buttons. I would think that uh, be. Well, after a thousand minor league games, you just pretty much make the assumption <laughs> the big leagues are not going to happen. And slapped back and out of play. So it's, it's nice that he had the perseverance to stick with it mm -hmm. and play well enough. And it's also very nice for the Rangers to recognize what he's meant to minor league baseball and in their system and the way he's mentored some of the younger Latin middle infielders. And they've rewarded him with his call up. It's, it's a nice thing. Off speed that floats in. It's one and two. Yeah, and it's hard to tell whether this tonight means more to Wilder Rodriguez or to Luis Sardinius and Rugnet Odor. I mean, they were just beside themselves happy for uh, for Rodriguez that this was happening. They are very, very appreciative for all the mentoring that he has given. He get down, get away. down. 
and it's going to fall in for a base hit. <laughs> and Wilder Rodriguez with his family watching as his first major league hit. Well, you know, it's, it's one thing to get to the big leagues. Another thing to get that hit. That is tremendous from Chuck Morgan. And that's to get to the crowd here. Everybody is on their feet. Dad very, emo Dad very emotional. Yeah. I don't blame him. That's tremendous. He's only, had a, he's only going to get a certain amount of bats to get that hit. He's going to start tonight and you know, make it another start and a few more at bats. But it's nice to be here. But now to say that uh, you've got a statistic yep. is, is even better. Yeah, he had been 0 for 6, now 1 for 7. And uh, aboard along with Torino's back to the top of the order. And uh, Luke Odor takes low and outside. One ball, no strikes. Wilder Rodriguez, the first major league hit at age 31. A two on, one out. Martin, a fly ball to center his first time up there. Leonis, one for four in yesterday's finale out in Anaheim. He has been a 344 hitter in the last 15 ball games. And that pitch inside to him, two and nothing. A little pitch that's up, a little bit outside, and I thought Grossman might come in and make the catch, but thank goodness that ball dropped in front of him. <laughs> And that ball came from the field right to the uh, authenticator, and it's going to go to the mantelpiece. The real there, Rodriguez. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Mom and Dad, well, that's pretty subdued, really, right? <laughs> compared to what they were probably feeling. Now, three and one. Well, that that takes the edge off right there. Yeah, sure does. I mean, hopefully he'll get three more hits, but if not, he got the hit, and that was for his mom and dad. Tropiano with a 3-1, and well, Leonis had a pretty good rip at a fastball, and that one out be full. And the guys on the bench, Odor and uh, Sardinius, Elvis Andrews in there, and Dad. Pretty much overcome. Boy, that had to be a whole bunch of emotion going into that. And ball four. That'll load the bases for Adam Rosales. And the first walk by either pitcher tonight. In the bottom of the third. It puts three aboard for Rosales. Now a first baseman. Classy out to uh, have a quick word with Tropiano. Rosales, a ground ball to third back in the first inning. Adam now at 290 with the average. Has 19 RBI. Three more out there on the base pass for him to pick up. Fastball, strike one on the outside corner. Rosales making his 35th start of the year, his 22nd at first base. Adam just a little bit below the major league average as far as scoring runners from third and less than two out. A little looper that's going to stay on the infield. And the infield fly, in effect, as uh, Altuve handles it. So Rosales gets jammed and uh, hits a little pop up. That's two out now. And it'll be up to Ruth Neto Door. Here in the third. Buzz, I, I got a note while we, in one of the games that I wasn't doing, and I didn't get a chance to congratulate Coach Johnny Steiger. He's 97 years old. He was recently inducted into the Tyler, Texas Sports Hall of Fame. I think that was last Friday. He was the head coach at John Tyler High School, quarterback at SMU, and also the quarterback for the 1934 state champs. 
for the Amarillo Sandys. So, Coach Steiger, Steiger, th uh, congratulations for your tremendous career, for the honor of being inducted into the Texas, Tyler, Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Sorry I didn't get that message out there earlier. Hope you're watching. 97 years old. Wow. Very good. All in one, the count to Rugnet Odor. Got Torinos, Rodriguez, and Martin, third, second, and first. Rugnet grounded out to the right side back in the first inning. You see the bases full of Ranger teammates for Odor. Off speed, that catches the inside corner. It's nothing in two. Both the Ranger hits have come in this inning. They came back to back from Torinos and Rodriguez with one out. And the walk loaded the bases. And Adam Rosales popped out. But Odor a chance to do some damage. One and two now. Rangers since the 12th of September, the last nine ball games, averaged almost six runs a game. That uh, big improvement. That ball's driven to left center field, slicing away from Fowler. It's over his head and to the wall. It's going to clear off the base. One run home, two runs home, three runs home. In with a head first side for a triple with Ben Odor. And the Rangers make it a three spot on the triple. Odor continues to drive the ball all over the field and shows surprising power the other way. We've already seen him hit a ball into the visitor's bullpen 400 feet. This one where the base is loaded. He drives into the gap over the center fielder's head. Three-run triple gets the Rangers on the board, and no one's happier than Will Bear Rodriguez to score that run. Odor drives in his 46th run of the season. 40. Four, five, and six. Yeah, Beltre up there seeing if he can score. Odor from third. He had a one two count. It looks like Tropiano hung him a slider right down the middle of the plate. He was ready for it. Beltre struck out first time that he faced Tropiano. Lines this one to right, and Marisnik, after a little bit of a Late start, able to make the grab. That'll do it, but a big three-run, two-out triple by Rubnet Odor. That's the Rangers on the board and out in one after three. Three-nothing, Rangers.
Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. And by the all-new Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Just like that, one pitch from Derek Holland and one out. Here's a fly ball off the bat of Robbie Grossman taken by Ryan Rua in left field. Next will be Jose Altuve. Well, the Rangers leading 3 0 and joining us in the booth now for the next three innings. Go host of this. He was live before and after ball games, Mark Macklin. Mac, uh, your offensive mojo was just a half an inning early. Well, actually, I was here. I just wasn't you're, sitting down. I was in the, I was, okay, I I was in the booth. So uh, forgive we, me then. I'm okay, sorry. All right. It was perfect. And congratulations, <laughs> then, by the way. <laughs> Three run outburst. Good job. Good job. I'll take it. Well, I'll tell you what. I, they've been swinging the bats well, coming up with big hits, you know, over the last 10, 11 games. Yep. Uh, it, it's been great to see, especially the young guys that are doing it. You know, the guys that have been here for a little bit, a few months. They're getting the job done. Well, two of a swing and a miss. Nothing in two now. We'll get back to the offense in just a second. But how about Derek Holland? How good has he been in the five games now that we've seen him? You know, this is the best stretch that I've ever seen him yeah, pitch. I agree. Uh, you know, being consistent from start to start. Typically, he'll have, you know, one or two starts that are fantastic and, you know, then maybe fall back a little bit. But five in a row or four and a half at least, uh, he's just been outstanding. Now, you know, it's got to be pretty good if he strikes out Jose Altuve. Yeah. And nothing secret about that. That's his strikeout pitch, that breaking ball down and into the right-handers. Altuve's a 422 hitter against left-handed pitching this year. Look at that. You know, I think that's the biggest difference. I think everything he's been throwing in these five starts has been down in the zone. Yeah. You know, I, you know obviously he's made some pitches and some mistakes up in the zone. Not very many, though. And uh, the, team, the team just haven't been able to capitalize on them. Chris Carter... Take strike two. Oh, look There's at that. The there. Fella. Prince Fielder coming out to uh, join in the fun. Good to see him out. Fielder, uh, talked to him last homestand. He said he was feeling pretty good and about ready to get back, back out doing stuff. <laughs> He's got some new teammates. Yeah. Never, never <laughs> seen Taylor's Tally, before. <laughs> Who is that Who guy? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably have to get, we get guys to wear name tags down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that, that didn't leave him was that smile. <laughs> Especially when he gets around Beltray. <laughs> well, back by Carter. Pretty good chance that Carter's going to have to lay off that slider down and in right here. Struck him out the first time with it. Yep. He's thrown three good fastballs on the inside part of the plate. Well, there was. A piece of it. Yeah, left it up a little bit. Still a ball and two strikes. Hey, get him on, get him on right down there in the shoe tops this time. You get another punch out. Jack in the box uh, pitch tracker. Need one down there right at the back of that catcher's box. Well, Carter's hit 37 home runs this year. That's the second most behind Nelly Cruz, who has 39. Battling Mike Trout for the strikeout lead, though. Chris Davis would, would have been a runaway winner if he wasn't suspended. And he laid off at that. Yes, time. he did. Two and two. Well, you know what you're going to get with Carter, uh, you know, and by hitting in that ballpark down there for 81 games, that that's got to be a pretty tough tr uh, proposition for opposing pitchers. This big guy, you can jam him and hit it out in the you know the proper box. <laughs> sure now three and two count. Well, if Carter extends this fourth inning, that would give Dexter Fowler a chance to uh, bat. Holland about ready to deal his 46th pitch of the night. Inside, ball four. The first walk for Holland. One on, two out. Fowler coming to the plate. Fowler had a single his first time.
The Fox Southwest Airlines is celebrating the arrival of 15 new nonstop destinations out of Dallas Love Field. Just go to southwest.com slash rangerslove to enter to win round-trip tickets. Good breaking ball from Holland. Took a little bit off and made it a curveball. Dropped it in to Dexter Fowler. Fowler a 275 average after that leadoff single in the second. Back to the plate from Holland. One and one. Fowler acquired from the Colorado Rockies and brought in with the idea of making him uh, a centerpiece both offensively and defensively for the Astros. Still a fairly young player and uh, certainly an accomplished center fielder. Can hit anywhere in the uh, upper part of the of the lineup for you. Another breaking ball that Fowler watches go into the dirt. Two and one. Bauer, despite missing 40 games, is the team leader in walks. He has 64 of them. And you can see some gap power from him. Six of his last 15 hits have gone uh, for two bases. Line drive, Rosales pulling it down from the top. What great reactions by Adam to pull that one in. And uh, double written all over. Astros are gone, and after three and a half, the Rangers three, and the Astros nothing, thanks to Adam Rosales. And Tomley, these guys having a good time polishing off the boomstick. But the big news is tomorrow night here at Globe Life Park. Yeah, go Rangers. Keep on eating, guys. Tomorrow night, first 15,000 fans here at the Ranger Ballpark. Globe Life Park received this nice Rangers gnome. That's right, the nice Rangers Garden gnome. First 15,000 fans at the ballpark. Let's see if we can balance that. Hey, not bad. Good use of that guy's head, huh, Buzz? Yeah, try, to, try to balance it the other way. Look at that. <laughs> try to eat that way, big guy, huh? Can you do it? Not bad. <laughs> Jake Smolinski starting off the uh, Ranger fourth inning, and he pulls that first pitch from Tropiano foul for ball one. Air strike one. <laughs> no, a, that's great. You gotta have real thick hair to make that stand up like that. Or a flat head. Or a flat head. Yeah. Smolitsky waving at that off speed pit from Tropiano. It's no balls, two strikes. Jake, a fly ball to right, his first time up there. Rangers leading 3 0. They about hit the Astros 3 2. 
Rangers putting three hits together and a walk in that third. A ball and two strikes. Three forty-nine average after the 0 for 1 for the Ranger right fielder, Jake Smolinski. One two pit. Slow roller up the middle, but in the right spot. They are can't get it. And Smolinski muscles a base hit to center to start off the Ranger fourth. Those kind of hits make you feel good. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> like jams you, you go, oh man. And then you look up and you go, whoa, there's no one there. We got a base hit on that thing. <laughs> the ball way, way in on the fist. Jake didn't hit it all that hard, but VR was way around, shading him toward third and goes right into center field for a <laughs> lovely little hit. I only hit mine on a good part of the Mac, bat, Max, so I wouldn't know what that feels like. I, I What's know, it feel like? I know all too well, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a great feeling. Double play ball to Dominguez around the horn. They go, and the Astros turn the double play on the ground uh, bouncer by Ryan Rua. Well, so much for the leadoff single. Base is now empty and two away for Luis Sardinius. Pretty good movement on that sinker. You're talking about his sinker as a part of the scouting report, Buzz, and there's a good example of it right yep. there. Pitch that hurt him was the hanging slider that he threw to Odor. Oh, two away. Sardinius hit a little line drive to shortstop. First time up. Reached out and poked the changeup, it looked like, and uh, but he hit right at VR. Luis, 267 with the average. Tropiano. It's like he can drop that change up in at will. We were told that was uh, probably his best off speed pitch. And he's certainly proven that to be correct. Luis didn't really want to do it, but went around anyway. One ball, two strikes. Sardine is just a 21 year old. And he skies one to center field. Extra Fowler ambling in and to his left a couple of steps. And the Rangers are gone. They get a leadoff single for the double play. He raises Smolinski. We're going to the fifth inning. It's the Rangers five, the Astros nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. morning at 10 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Southwest where it's not about the score it's about the experience 
A nice uh, experience tonight, weather-wise and score-wise. Comfortable 80 degrees and Rangers leading 3-0. Derek Holland begins the fifth inning by missing high to Jake Marisnik. It is one ball, no strikes. Marisnik grounded into a fielder's choice back in the second inning. Takes a knee-high strike to even the count. That for Holland, just his 52nd pitch of the night. He's dealing here in the fifth inning. Mersnick is one of the guys that the Astros got from Florida in the trade that involved Jared Kosart. A lot of people wondered how a team trying to build for the future would trade a very good and potentially really good young starting pitcher like Jared Kosar. Now they got a return that they thought was worth it for them. Marisnik was part of it. Some younger players, highly touted younger players as well. I think the Astros looked at what they needed for their organization and they were a little short on outfielders at the upper levels. And pitching, most folks would uh, believe their pitching development's far ahead of their position player development. Tom Wallace, the uh, interim manager, took over 1st of September. Old Porter was uh, relieved of duties. Three and two, the count to Marisnik. Holland to the wind, the payoff pitch. We'll try it again. Marisnik was involved in another big trade, too. He went to Miami. He came from uh, Toronto, his original organization. That was that big fire sale, if you will, that the, the Marlins had. He got rid of uh, you know, Burley and John Buck and Josh Johnson. And Marisnik shoots one to right for a base hit. He had a long at bat and on a... The second 3-2 pitch, singles to right. And again, the uh, Astros have their leadoff man aboard. Now one on, nobody out. Alex Presley, the DH who popped out his first time that he faced Derek Holland, will step in. Rangers tonight have had one double play after a leadoff hit. That was back in the first. And in the second, almost had two up. Presley at 255. Six home runs and 19 driven in. Holland. Remember Marisnik when he had gotten on in the second inning on the fielder's choice. Holland uh, almost picked him off on one pitch and then Marisnik was uh, going on first movement the next pitch and he got picked off that way. Houston second in the American League but not anywhere close to Kansas City. There's some 30 stolen bases behind the Royals. Well, the young team that, that runs with every chance they get. Yeah, well, they've improved over the years for, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, in the base the department, of course, Altuve with 54, you know, has helped quite a bit. But you look at Fowler, Fowler can steal bases. You've got Marisnik that can run as well. So their personnel has definitely changed. Yeah, that ball gets behind Torinos and down to second goes Marisnik. Robinson, the way he went after, looked like he thought he had blocked it and kept it near home plate. Yeah, sneaking his way under his glove. A wild pitch charged to Derek Holland. Two balls and a strike. The count to Alex Presley. Torinos through the series of signs. Holland back to the plate. And a chopper to the right side. 
Odor thought about going to third, but Marisnik had too good a jump going that way. And he got the sure out at first. Presley retired. One gone now with uh, Marisnik at third for Matt Dominguez. Well, that was a nice thought on Odor's part, but you've got a 3 nothing lead. You want to make sure that you get that one out. and He gets over to third base. He just gets over to third base. The ball's got to be hit a lot harder than that and probably a different situation. Mm -hmm. Almost looked like he got the ball caught in his glove. Yeah, I think that's the only reason he didn't yeah, throw it. I, he was ready to fire that thing. <laughs> if he got it out of his glove, it was gone. There's a little squibber down the first baseline, and it's going to score the run as Rosales had to take it before. You know, it might have gone into foul territory. It might not have, but if he was going to tag Dominguez, he had to pick it up then. And Dominguez with a little cue shot. Gets the RBI on a ground out. It is three to one, Rangers. Yeah, that's a tough one there. That's a little squibber, and that's not an easy ball. It's probably going to go foul, but I don't know. I don't really think I want Dominguez up there. This guy can reach the seats in a hurry. So yeah. I'll take the out, give up a run, and let Holland go to work, continue to go to work from here. You know, the wild pitch moved Marisnik to second base. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if the same ball was it, they had a pretty good chance to turn two. And a swinging strike by Max Stasi. It's nothing in one. Stasi had a ground ball to third his first time up there. Pop foul. No balls, two strikes. Bossy brought up to be the third catcher in this month of September. Jason Castro and uh, Carlos Corporan have been with the club all year long. And, and he pops the next pitch up. Foul territory. Rosales near the railing. Has to backpedal a bit. And makes the grab. That'll do it. No, well, the Astros able to scratch out a run. They get a run on one hit. And nobody left. We're halfway through the game. It's the Rangers three and the Astros one. Is leading three to one. We head to the bottom of the fifth, and Chevron would like to catch you up on the starting pitchers for tomorrow night. The Brett Oberholzer, the left-hander for the Astros, and Nick Martinez on the hill for the Rangers. Martinez picked up his fourth win his last time out in Oakland. Seven o'clock right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Martinez and uh, Luke Ned Odor and Nick on the hill tomorrow night, and probably pitched as well as we've seen him pitch. Open. Excellent command and didn't nibble at all. 
He was talking about that after the ball game. He, said he was he was happy with the progress he'd made in that regard. Well, Robinson Torinos to start things off here in the Ranger fifth. Torinos had the first hit for the Rangers back in the third. Rangers put together a couple more hits and a walk for a three-run third inning. Strike one. But Torino's now up to 244 with the average. Robinson now extending his career best hitting streak. Seven consecutive games. Didn't quite get that breaking ball. One and two. Tropiano with the next pitch. And just stayed a little bit high. Way inside. Three balls and two strikes. Oh. Robinson trying to uh, get aboard for the second time. Leading off here in the fifth inning. He'll be followed by Wilder Rodriguez. Torinos asked for time. Alfonso Marquez said, okay. Now set to go. And Tropiano with the payoff pitch. Slowly hit up the middle. VR. One gone. Third Let's take a look at the AT&T U-verse Rewind. How about uh, the job that Wilder Rodriguez has done tonight? A little flip of the uh, baseball to his dad sitting over there in the stands next to the dugout. And then his first major league hit, the Rodriguez family went crazy. Well, that, that had to be like letting the pressure valve off of a steam cooker. All, they were, all the emotions they were feeling probably since... Uh, getting to the ballpark even on the way to the ballpark. I'm sure it, uh, it was a big relief for Wilder to get that first hit. No one won the count to him here. Pulls this one on the ground, Chris Carter. We'll take that to the bag at first. Two gone. Sir and let's take time here for a mark to game break. Once again, here's John Raddick. All right, John, thank you. Now, Leonis Martin with his third plate appearance tonight. He walked and scored in that third inning. Flied out to center in the first, so 0 for 1 officially. And he chops that one straight down on his right foot. Did the same thing the other day. I think it was in Anaheim, wasn't it? Yeah, you're right, he did. That's got to be painful. He, you know, he's got the pad on there, but... Sometimes you miss the pad. <laughs> yeah. If I remember right, we saw it the other day where it, it hit just above that pad and got mm -hmm. him on the calf. And it, it looks like and Matt Lucero is going to go out there and see if he can't help him out a bit. It looks like it got him about in the same place. That's not good. He's going to feel that for an awfully long time. Yep. Oh, that was the exact same exact spot. Exact same spot. What <laughs> inside part of his leg, right above the pad. He needs to get a higher right pad. There. Yeah, he needs a longer pad. He does. And I think he would probably agree with that right about now. He's, <laughs> he he's, he's moving it up too. <laughs> this one probably gonna hit margin. right. This one hit him right in the ankle. <laughs> Right, have, to move path, it back, right. have to move it back down. <laughs> Get a couple of pads or something. Oh. 
I didn't have that problem. I didn't foul many balls did off either. the leg. I, I never you did know, either. Occasionally off the foot. Yeah, you saw something away from him. He was swinging at that no matter what. Oh, yeah. you get that out of there. No, so that'll do it. Rangers uh, down in order as Tropiano rebounds. He has a one, two, three frame. We're going on to the sixth. It's the Rangers three and the Astros one. Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. The Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event, now playing at a Ford dealer near you. Derek Holland with the first pitch of the sixth inning, and Jonathan Villar drives one to right. It's over the head of Jake Smolinski. Villar going for two, and he's ahead, ahead of the throw. Well, VR is showing you pretty good pop going the other way. It's 13th double of the year, and that's how the sixth inning begins for the Astros. Yeah, VR's only been up 250 times. He's got six home runs, so he's got a little bit of pop. Got a high fastball up and away from him. Pretty good pitch. If you're going to go the other way to do it with, put a charge in it. Well, the fourth hit of the night for the Astros. Hits are even now for the two clubs. VR at second base. Top of the order now will face Holland for the third time tonight. Robbie Grossman, one for two. Grossman, a single in the first inning. And last time up, sky to left field. Grossman, a 229 hitter. Holland a check of second. And Grossman getting the butt down. Rodriguez can't get a handle on it. And everybody's safe. And Rodriguez tried to come in and barehanded and uh, came up empty on his first stab. And then it was too late. Second base for Jose Altuve. Yeah, it might go as an error. It's definitely a sacrifice bunt. Move the runner over to third base. Went to bare hand, it just couldn't pick it up. It is a sacrifice bunt. So no time at bat for Grossman. The error by Rodriguez. Now runners at the corners with nobody out. Here's Altuve. Pitch is low and inside for ball one. Altuve has grounded into a double play and struck out tonight. 0 for 2. At 220 hits this year. Altuve, the most. Uh, 
hits by a second baseman now since 1936. Charlie Geringer, the uh, Tigers, had 227 that year. Altuve uh, passed Rod Carew. A couple of hits back. Who had uh, 218. That's saying a lot. You get, you get a lot of in there with Carew, and you passed him in something offensive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with him. Now, two of eight to the left center field alley. It's down and going close to the wall. One run home. Here comes Grossman. He's put, the brakes are put on him. The throw back to third behind him, and he's just able to get back in there. Now, Pat Listex, the third base coach, put up a late stop sign. For Grossman. Yeah, Grossman almost didn't get back. Well, he's lucky he had a very agile base runner because Grossman was able to put on the brakes and get back. A lot of runners that if they got that far toward home plate wouldn't have been able to stop and get back as quickly as Grossman. The Rangers get that ball in very quick. And that looks like a good runner from first base is going to score easily. The Lions able to cut it off before it gets to the warning track and make an accurate throw and you can see how how far Grossman had gone toward home plate but still with his quickness was able to get back and with nobody out he didn't want to take a chance on having someone thrown out he almost got him thrown out anyway well, so the Astros have uh, cut the lead to three two Rangers and they have second and third with nobody out here in the sixth inning first real jam that uh, Derek Holland has been in any of his five starts. He's got his hands full here. Chris Hart Carter is the hitter. And the Rangers pulling the infield back. They are going to give up the run, the tying run, for and out if they can get it. Our Ford leaderboard showing you the most hits by a right handed batter since 1974. There's Altuve. Kirby Puckett on that list twice. Paul Molitor also on that list. As Carter fouls back the next pitch. 0 oh and 2. Michael Young also uh, on that list. Carter has walked and struck out. Rangers again with the overshift. Loading up the left side of the diamond against Carter. Holland working from the stretch. The 0-2 to right field. That's hit pretty well. It sends Smolinski back. Plenty deep enough to score Grossman. He tags from third and scores. Tagging at second, moving into third is Altuve. And Carter with a sacrifice fly ties this ball game at three. That is a very strong man. He got jammed on that ball and almost hit that ball to the, to the warning track. Look at that. Got inside there. Didn't quite bury it where he wanted to. But it gets enough wood on it to drive it deep enough to score the tying run. So it's a brand new ball game now. Tied at three. Altuve with the go-ahead run at third. Rangers now pull the infield in with Dexter Fowler at the plate. And he hits one to short. Sardinia is able to knock it down recover in time to throw out Fowler. Well, there's a big second out. They made a good pitch. He jammed him, too. Get Marisnik right here and leave the game at a 3-3 game. He'd be in pretty good shape. They got that ball in on Fowler pretty well that time, too. <laughs> no, Altuve still at third. Marisnik one for two. And he takes that uh, pitch on the inside corner for strike one. Blowing in. Oh, and one.
Astros with uh, runners in scoring position, 241. That is right at about the same level as their overall average. Two and one now, the count to Marisnik. Holland okays the sign and sets. Fly ball. Shallow right center. Smolinski, plenty of time to get there and puts it away. And that'll do it. But the Astros come back to tie the ball game. They get two runs on two hits and an error and leave one. After five and a half, Rangers three, Astros three. It's time now for the Sonic Slam Inning, brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $1,400 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are in for George Yaws of uh, Seagaville. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, George Yaws of Seagaville will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Well, Astros have come back to tie this ball game, three apiece. Astros five hits, Rangers four, and Adam Rosales starting off the Sonic slam inning. Adam 0 for 2, a ground out and a pop out. Nick Dropiano fires a change up in for strike one. Next pitch, a fastball in at the knees. No balls and two strikes. Got him swinging. Tropiano. Gotten it going again. And that is out number one. Second strikeout. Tropiano. One gone. Rudin Odor coming up. And we understand we were given the, the wrong information. The lady on your left is Francis indeed. But that is Wheeldare Rodriguez's wife. And of course his uh, dad sitting there. And Guillermo. We apologize for the uh, misinformation. They are nonetheless extremely excited about what they've what they have seen from Wheeldare tonight. Rugnet Odor one for three, one for two. He had that uh, big three-run triple last time up and fouls off that first pitch. Odor now 46 runs driven in. Rugnet coming in. To play tonight was sixth with the 43 RBI among rookies. Flies out to right. Marisnik able to capture that. That is out number two. Two and 
two up, two away, and that is uh, seven straight now retired by Tropiano. And Adrian Beltre will stand in. Yeah, Tropiano has thrown the ball well for most of the game. He had a little stretch in the third inning with one out. He got the first out of the inning and single, single walk. Loaded the bases, then he got an out. Looked like he was going to get out of the inning. He had a one and two count on Odor, hung a slider, and that's all three runs right there. Mm -hmm. But before that and after that, all he's given up is one single. That was by Jake Smolinski, and he was erased on a double play. Well, other than that one stretch of four or five batters, he's been pretty tough. One ball and one strike to Adrian. Beltran, a strikeout of the second, a fly ball to right in the third. 324, the average for the Ranger veteran. Now two and one. Beltran had a 9 for 23 road trip. That's a 391 average. He drove in four. In the uh, six games on that trip. Of course, over his career, he has had great success against both the A's and the Angels. And the two stops on uh, on the road trip were some of his favorite places to hit. At home this season, his very favorite place to hit. Second highest average in the American League at 361. Two balls, two strikes after the foul ball. Tropiano doesn't stray far from the top of that pitching mound. Into the line goes the right-hander. And Beltre, a fly ball to center. Dexter Fowler ambling in, makes the catch. That'll do it. Again, it's a 1-2-3 inning. Mac, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We will see you after the ball game. All right. On to the seventh, three-three. The score. Up tonight. Three runs on five hits for the Astros, three runs on four hits, and one error for the Rangers. Wilder Rodriguez first major league hit here tonight, and uh, Rugnet Odor, a three run triple in that third inning. Other than that, Rangers have been held uh, in check by Nick Tropiano. Derek Holland's first pitch to Alex Presley begins the seventh inning with a one ball, no strike count. Presley 0 for 2, a pop out and a ground out. Now two balls, no strikes. Oh, Derek had a fairly long sixth inning, but he's got a pretty good pitch count. He's only thrown 79 pitches, so he's in pretty good shape to get through the seventh. And with a quick seventh inning, maybe an eighth inning too. And that 
pitch off the outer edge. Three balls and no strikes. Derrick a little perturbed with the result of that last pitch. Well, three and all. Presley trying to start out things off by getting aboard. Matt Dominguez will follow in the order. And down the middle at the knees for strike one. Presley, a 254 average, half a dozen home runs. Two hopper out to the charging Luis Sardinas. One gone. No good job by Holland to come back from 3 0 to get the ground out to start the set. And that will bring up Matt Dominguez. Dominguez has had hits in each of his last two games. Tonight, he is 0 for 2, but he does have an RBI. Got an RBI on a ground out in the fifth inning. Takes the first pitch inside for ball one. Twenty-seven year old Derek Holland studying the signs. Now the one-all pitch. To center field. Leonis Martin started in a step, had to take a step back. And right where he began, he puts it away. Two gone for Max Stasi. Folks, this October, history will be made as baseball's postseason moves to America's new sports network. It's Fox Sports 1 is your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series. And it all begins this October. Two up, two down. Max Stasi, 0 for 2. And Holland pours in strike one. Stasi this year was a Pacific Coast League All Star. Rated the uh, top Astro catching prospect. One one pitch from Holland. Now two and one. Derek into the wind and back to the plate. Stasi rips one to left field. It is headed toward the corner and high off the wall. Played by Rue, who bobbled it momentarily, so the throw is going to be late. Sliding in with a ringing double is Max Stassi. Unfortunately, that ball wasn't hit any higher, and it stayed in the ballpark. In fact, if Ryan was able to grab that ball right off the bat without bobbling it and make the same throw, Stassi wouldn't have gotten to second base on it. That's how hard he hit that ball and how hard it hit off the wall right straight to Ryan. Yeah, pretty good pitch to hit. Hit it pretty hard. Unfortunately, he kept it down. So the sixth hit of the night, given up by Derek Holland, and a ringing double that brings up Jonathan VR. VR hit a hard double the other way. Drove it over Jake Smolinski's head in right field. That's how the uh, sixth inning began for the Astros. Well, here in the seventh, he has Stasi at second with two outs. A ball and a strike. We are a 213 average. He was the uh, starting shortstop for the Astros for the first three months of the season. Sent him down to AAA at the end of June. One and two as Holland gets the sign. A check of second. And VR pulls one foul into the seats. Yeah. 
The R switch hitter batting from the right side against the lefty Holland. In the dirt, two and two. And Derek trying to put a capper on this seventh inning. <laughs> Major's captain getting the getting into the tickle act. <laughs> and VR skies one to right center field. Leonis Martin waiting for it to come down, makes the catch, that'll do it. Astros get a two-out double and leave uh, Stasi stranded. Stretch time in Arlington. 3-3 three, three to score. to uh, catch a post-game fireworks show is this Friday. That would be uh, September 26th. Uh, following the game against the A's, fans will be treated to a spectacular fireworks show thanks to our friends at the Great Big Green Egg and Capital Distributing. $15 tickets for upper reserve seating sections are available at texasrangers.com slash specials. All you have to do is use the coupon code fireworks. Bottom of the seventh inning, Jake Smolinski starting things off against Nick Tropiano. A 3-3 game, Smolinski takes the first pitch outside. Jake singled to start off the fourth inning, but was erased on a double play. 359, the average for Smolinski. And he takes that pitch low and inside. Two balls, no strikes. Jake, you remember, missed about seven weeks with that uh, broken left foot. Found a pitch down on his foot uh, in New York. A hairline fracture and uh, took him the seven weeks to get back into the into the lineup. But he hasn't missed many many opportunities. He's been swinging the bat well. That pitch is low. It's three and one. So Jake trying to get aboard to start off the. Rangers seventh inning. He'll be followed by Ryan Rua. The 3 1 from Tropiano. I think Jake might have expanded his strike zone a little bit on that one. Full count. Tropiano into the wind, the payoff pitch. And we'll try it again. 
from Tropiano in his first two starts went five innings through 80 pitches in the first one last time out against Cleveland. He threw 101 pitches in five innings. He only gave up four hits and one run through a lot of pitches today. Only 87 pitches here in the seventh inning. And again other than the third inning. He's been pretty much untouchable for the Rangers. Whoa, that one got away from us. That pitch. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't believe he wanted to do that on 3 2 pitch. Well, we heard a lot about the movement, and uh, that certainly moved a lot. Then he got uh, Jake Smolinski right on the left pocketbook. He's got the go ahead run on first base with nobody out. That just, that just moved from the inside of the strike zone to the <laughs> wrong side of his rear end. Now, Smolinski aboard, and he didn't appear to be uh, phased by that too much. <laughs> That's got to bother Surprised him. Surprised a little yeah, bit. Exactly. You just don't uh, anticipate a 3 2 pitch ending up over there. <laughs> no one on, nobody out. Here's Ryan Rua. Taking a fastball right down the middle. Well, Ryan, picked a good, Ryan picked a good time yesterday to hit his first home run. He launched that thing in the bullpen in Anaheim. Let us get home at an early hour. Yeah. Who knows? We might might have played five more innings that day. Might still be playing. Yep. So thanks, Ryan. Jorge De Leon out in the uh, Astro uh, bullpen is that button goes foul off the bat of Rua. We'll come back and try it. And an 0-2 count. Rua last time up grounded into a double play. The, uh, the bunt attempt trying to make sure that didn't happen here in the seventh inning. But now 0 and 2 will be up there swinging the bat. Rua with a 306 average after he's 0 for 2 here tonight. Smolinski a pretty good lead at first. Now time called. Tropiano peering in for the sign and the right hander sets at the belt. Got him swinging. Well, Rua couldn't catch up with that fastball from Tropiano who gets his third strike out of the night. One away for Luis Sardinius. And before Sardinius steps in let's take time for a Mazda game break. Here's John Radigan. All right, John, thank you. Well, that has been kind of a back and forth yeah, that, that's a between those race. two teams. Seattle's kind of bowing out of the wild card yeah. race the way they've been playing lately. That was there for the grasping for them. I think everybody thought they might be able to pull it off too with the starting pitching they've gotten. Right. Their pitching has not been quite as good. Akuma got bombed the other day. Paxton got bombed today. And there's the wild card as we uh, stand right now. Kansas City, a game and a half lead on the Mariners. They can increase that by another half game. Off speed and high to Sardinus. Luis is lined to short and fly to center. 0 for 2 tonight. Hitting at 264. You know, though, Buzz, we've seen the last week of the season. Teams make up more games than a game and a half for two games. You yep. never know what can happen. That's low and gets away. Headed for second is Smolinski. He will make it. For the head first dive. That ball uh, bounced away from Stasi, and Stasi thought it got behind him. Instead, it bounced out in front of home plate. Smolinski hesitated just a little bit to make sure, and he took off. Wild pitch charged to Tropiano. Rangers now the go ahead run out there at second with one out here in the seventh inning. Two balls and a strike to Sardinius. Fly ball shallow right. Marisnik with the catch. 
And uh, Smolinski will stay at second. That's out number two. And it will bring up Robinson Torinos. Torinos, a single and a run scored in that three run third. Robinson at uh, 243 now with the average. Last time up, he grounded a short. Chance here with a base hit to the outfield to uh, maybe get the Rangers on top again. Smolinski stepping off his lead at second. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, Brent Strom, the Astros pitching coach, going to make a visit out to the mound. And, well, we have a moment here. Why don't we uh, go ahead and show you tonight's AT&T fan photo selection. We uh, we'll give you one of these each night that we are on Fox Sports Southwest. And tonight, the fan photo is from Camille. Thank you very much. Great picture, and we appreciate you sending in, sending it along. And if for you folks that would like to tweet your photo, it's hashtag Southwest Fan Photo, and uh, we will select one for each ball game. Six of them left in the season. The young ladies right there tweeting their photos in. One ball, no strikes. The count to Chirinos. Now 2 0. Oh. Robinson with runners in scoring position this year. Then a pretty good job. Almost 20 points higher than his overall average. Known to say that he has risen to the occasion would not be uh, an understatement. He's not going to get a chance here. They're going to go ahead and walk him after falling behind 2 0. Oh. Wheel there, Rodriguez. And we'll see if uh, Tim Bogar lets him hit. I would think that he probably would on this uh, this night that uh, Wheel there is kind of fulfilling uh, a dream evening, if you will, out there with both Reese Sardinius and uh, Rubnet Odor getting to start in the same infield with him. Already has his first major league hit. Now he's got an opportunity to put the Rangers on top with another hit. Yeah, the Astros may not be taken into consideration the magic that might be going yeah. on tonight. And the first pitch from Tropiano is low and inside for ball one. Now Wilder lined a single to left field in his first at bat in that third. He's got Smolinski at second, Chirinos at first. Line drive, up the, uh, off the glove, into left center. Around third comes Smolinski, he will score. And Wilder Rodriguez with his first big league RBI, and it puts the Rangers on top in the seventh inning, four to three. That's the magic we're talking about yep. right there, Buzz. You can't walk somebody to face Wilder Rodriguez in that situation. Now with his dad in the... Not even with his dad in the stands. <laughs> nice going, Will Dare. They got a good fastball to hit up and out over the plate. Thought for a minute that VR might catch him. Yeah. That's the part of the magic that they have to take into consideration. That ball won't even stick in his glove. <laughs> Has some of that leather repel. <laughs> oh, goodness. What a night for Will Dare Rodriguez. How about that? First major league hit. Now he has two major league hits and his first big league RBI on that uh, glancing blow off of VR's gloves. So that's going to do it for Nick Tropiano. He leaves trailing four to three and a couple on base are his responsibility. A little pitching change underway here at Globe Live Park. The Rodriguez's are thrilled to death. And so are the Rangers. They lead it four to three. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Saturday, September 25th, Rangers play host to the A's in the first 15,000 fans, 14 and over, get a U Darvish jersey. That's courtesy of Dr. Pepper and Albertson. Get your tickets for the last giveaway night of the season at TexasRangers.com. Well, the folks on hand tonight seeing a fantasy night for Will Dare Rodriguez. Kevin Chapman on for the Astros. 5.21 ERA, 19 innings. A lot of strikeouts, a couple too many walks, maybe. Putting up three home runs in the 19 innings. And Chapman brought in to face Leonis Martin with runners at first and second. A run across and two outs. One ball, no strikes. Martin, one for four in his previous matchups with Chapman. Rangers have taken a 4-3 lead. Chirinos out at second. Rodriguez at first. Chapman sets. And uh, the breaking ball is high. It's 2-0. Now, Leonis uh, has certainly shown the willingness and the ability lately to hit the ball the other way against left-handers. He's got a perfect spot here against Chapman to do it. 2-0 pitch. That is outside and low. It's three balls and no strikes. And if Leonis gets aboard, Adam Rosales, right-handed hitting first baseman, waiting to be next. Torinos, Rodriguez, second and first. And a fastball down the middle makes it three and one. Martina, 278 average. 0 for 2 tonight, although he has walked and scored. That was back in the third. There, Rodriguez at first base has given the Rangers the lead with his first Major League RBI. The 3 1 coming to Martin. He saw almost all breaking balls until the last two and couldn't catch up with the fastball. Roman Mendez ready if needed in that Ranger bullpen. With two outs now, both Chirinos and Rodriguez will be off and moving. Chapman set. Runners on the move. Payoff pitch. Out, called strike three. And Martin maybe looking for a three and two breaking ball. Didn't get it. And he's caught looking. Rangers will take the lead. They get a run on a hit and lead two. We're going to the eighth inning. Rangers four, Astros three.
Time, time for the progressive fan of the game. First off, good to have the Wolf family, six strong right here, having a nice time, but the progressive fan has to go to Lydia, celebrating her 96th birthday tonight. Big Ranger fan, here's the shirt. Congratulations, happy birthday. Anything you'd like to say? I'm supposed to say, go Rangers. Go Rangers, that go sounds Rangers. good to me. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say it. Yeah, why don't you say it? Okay, go Rangers. Go. <laughs> Great job. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 96 years old out at the ballpark. That's having great. A, having a great time. Robbie Grossman, the top of the order for the Astros, starting the eighth inning. And Derek Holland back out there, drops in a curveball for strike one. Grossman, one for two tonight, a single. He's also had a sacrifice bunt and scored a run. Derek just off the outer corner. One and one the count. And Grossman, a 229 average. Rangers four runs, five hits. The Astros three runs on six hits. And Grossman takes strike two. Curveball, change up, just missed, and then a fastball. Wasn't ready for the fastball after the two off speed pitches. Holland back to the plate. That breaking ball again couldn't get Grossman to offer. That's usually when you can get a guy to fish for one after uh -huh. he's taken a couple of pitches for strike two yeah. behind in the count. He says, boy, I can't take another one and you get him <laughs> to fish for one. But Grossman, as we've said, he has a good eye at the plate. Got a good on base percentage. He gets a lot of walks. Doesn't swing at that pitch very often. Now the 2 2. Full count. No, Grossman, who uh, singled in the first on a full count. As a matter of fact, it was a nine pitch at bat to begin things. Trying to get aboard Jose Altuve, the number two hitter, waiting. And Derek has to get Grossman to stay in the game, you would think, with a right hander warmed up and a couple of right hand hitters, two good right hand hitters coming up. One really good hitter and one dangerous hitter. And this could be his last hitter either way. Anyway, yeah, definitely. Maybe. I mean, this is his 100th pitch coming up. Pay off to Grossman. Base hit to right. They'll drop in front of uh, Smolinski. So Grossman with his second hit. Second time he's led off an inning with a base hit. And Tim Bogar on his way to the mound. And no doubt that is going to be all for Derek Holland tonight. Who, a little disgusted with himself. But he's had seven plus innings of uh, good work again here this evening. And Tim Bogar. Taking the ball from Holland, he wants uh, Roman Mendez to come in, and Derek will get a nice round of applause as he heads back to the Ranger dugout. So a pitching change underway. One on, nobody out in the eighth. Rangers on top by one. We're back after this. Derek Holland, a little talk after uh, Derek came out of the ball game. Derek going over things uh, with Mike and Mike uh, 
is always offering a pretty good uh, breakdown of what he saw, and Derek absorbing that. Good evening, though, for Holland. His two earned runs and leads with one runner on his responsibility. Roman Mendez on now to take over. Well, you keep talking about the young relievers coming into important games and key situations, an opportunity normally you wouldn't have in September, or for that matter, earlier months as well if everybody was healthy. But Roman has gotten a good opportunity, and he's taken advantage of it, a 171 opponent's batting average. And here he is in the eighth inning, best part of their lineup in a one-run game with a man on first base and no out. So it's a good test for Roman, who has been throwing the ball well. He passes this test. That'll be a nice feather in his cap. Sure will be. Made Grossman uh, dive back. Now he's got to be careful on the first pitch to Altuve. Now, Tuve won for three tonight. Had that RBI double in the sixth inning. Loves to swing early in the count, especially first pitch if it's close. Mendez with the pitch. Runner on the move. The pitch is fouled off. And, boy, that, that put Chirinos in a real bad spot. With the runner moving, Robinson coming up out of the crouch to uh, get the ball as quickly as possible. And the hit and run on Altuve fouled it down and that a lot of exposed areas of the catcher without uh, without panning on him watch this yeah Altuve oh. Altuve is about the only one that could follow that ball off he practically had a jump to foul it off he did his feet came off the ground yeah. <laughs> he jumped to hit that ball well right down on the left side of Robinson Chirinos I don't think I've seen that before. A hitter jump straight up in the air to try to hit a ball. <laughs> no, I can't say I have. And either. make some contact. Yeah. And normally you hear about hand-eye coordination. How about foot hand-eye? That's, that's pretty amazing. The 0 and one to Altuve. Grossman again, a pretty good lead at first. And again, Mendez making him dive back. And Rosales holding the bag against Grossman at first. <laughs> Pitchers outside Torinos making Grossman dive back. Make him dive back enough, he's going to get a whole bunch of dirt in his uniform and slow him down. One and one down to that. Good breaking ball for Mendez. One ball, two strikes. Altuve backing away from that pitch. That pitch was right down the middle of the plate. Well, Altuve is one for two against Mendez. And the one-two pitch. He almost walked right into that one. Trying to convince Alfonso Marquez he was hit by the pitch, and uh, Marquez was not buying that. No. Yeah, nice try. Two and two. Mendez gets a sign. And uh, we'll fire on to first. Tough guy to strike out. 13 over 13 plate appearances. First strikeout for Altuve. Victor Martinez leading the league with 15 and a half almost. Now the 2 2 to center field. Leonis Martin was playing deep, so he cut straight across and makes the catch. Altuve is generally going to make good contact, and he made solid contact with that ball. He had a double into the gap, and that one was hit just as well as his double, but he didn't get it in the gap. The team is over in right center field just a little bit. Where I think he'd play Altuve, especially if he's going to get a fastball, but Altuve got out in front of it a little bit, pulled it to the left side of second base, but not far enough. Leonis was still able to run it down. 
So that is a very important out number one, and it brings up Chris Carter. Carter is 0 for 1 officially tonight. He struck out in the first. Since then, he has walked and had a sacrifice fly, driving in his 88th run of the year. Grossman, the lead from first. Mendez to the plate. One ball, no strikes. Again, with uh, Carter up there, the Rangers in that overshift. Odor, the second baseman, playing just a step on the third base side of second base. Sardinius protecting the hole between short and third. 1-0 pitch. 1-1. One one. That'll get the job done, that slider. Keep it right there. You're not going to get hit too hard, I wouldn't think. No. He's better right hand. Grossman has shortened up his lead just a bit. That breaking ball is wide. Two and one. For Chris Carter, you go back to the 1st of July. Since that day, he's leading the major leagues with 24 home runs. He's also second with 57 RBI. Two-one pitch. Mendez, of course, with that big fastball, and he has chosen to stay with the slider to Chris Carter. Yep, in the back of Carter's mind, he knows it's there. That's going to hurt him trying to hit that slider too. He knows he's got a good fastball. Judging by where Torino's set up, he might be seeing it right here. Mm -hmm. See what Robinson has in mind. Checking in with the uh, Ranger bench just to see if there are any special instructions. Yeah, he wants that slider again now the fastball. Let's go ahead and go with that fastball. Get it out there. The 2 2. Full count. Uh, Carter hitting third in the order trying to get aboard to uh, join Grossman Dexter Fowler the cleanup man waits in the on deck circle Rangers leading four to three and one on one out here in the eighth inning Omar Mendez taking over for Derek Holland Grossman on the move the pitch is outside ball four Carter draws the walk. There are two on with one out for Fowler. Yeah, when, you, when you get ahead of Carter, who's, who strikes out a lot, that's an out you want to get. Fowler's a better hitter and a very patient hitter. He walks a lot. You have to pitch him tough now with a tying run at second base. Doesn't have Carter's power, not quite as dangerous a hitter. Quite a better chance of putting the ball in play. Well, first and second, Fowler will turn around the bat from the left side now against the right-hander Mendez. Fowler tonight, one for three. Had a single leading off the second. Also lined to first and grounded to short. First pitch coming from Mendez. Looper to right field and going out is Odor to make the catch. That ball really got in on foul. I thought it was going to carry a little further than that, but Odor had it measured all the way. That's out number two. That's the second time the Rangers have jammed Fowler in a key situation. One right-handed, one left-handed. Derek got him back in the sixth inning. For the man on third base and less than one out. He had a little tapper with the infield into shortstop. This time with first and second and one out. Mendez gets in on his fist and a little blooper to second base for the second out. So they've gotten Fowler, a good hitter, twice in key situations. Eric Collin and Prince Fielder, Alex Rios sharing a laugh on the Ranger bench. Two out, two on. 
Jake Marisnik is one for three tonight. Takes ball one. Marisnik led off the fifth inning by single and came around to score. Other than that, he has uh, reached on a fielder's choice and fly to right field. Robinson Torino's out to uh, let the infielders know what he's going to do if there is a, an attempted uh, double steal. Uh, Grossman with pretty good speed at second. And Carter, who runs pretty well, over at first. 1-0 pitch. Foul ball. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. Maristic now a five-game hitting streak. He's got the tying and go-ahead runs aboard here with two outs in the eighth inning. Mendez okays the sign and checks the runners. Oman ready once again. And that pitch is low. Two balls and a strike. There, Rodriguez over to uh, the mound to have something to say to Mendez. Nice to have that veteran presence out there when uh, Adrian's not in the defensive lineup. Still got a yeah. It's funny to call a guy up for the up for, for the big legs for the first week of his life a veteran, but he yeah, is. He is. He's, he's a 31 year old veteran with a thousand games in the minor yeah. leagues. He knows how the game is played. Two and one as Mendez sets. Not two and two. And Robinson Torinos, you know, I don't think a game goes by that he doesn't get one square in the mask or off the side of the mask. He just gets pummeled by more foul balls. In the middle of his forehead. Solid shots, too. <laughs> check and make sure there's not a crack in that thing. Well, two and two, the count to Marisnik. Alan well, Mendez uh, has his typical and very slow, methodical worker. He sets now, and the pitch. Got him swinging. 94, and elevated a bit, and a big strikeout for Roman Mendez. Astros are thwarted in the eighth. No runs a hit, two men are left after seven and a half. Four, three, Rangers.
they tending with the Rangers to try to pad this 4-3 lead that they have on the Astros. Meantime, we are here in the Captain Morgan Club getting ready for Rangers Live presented by Insurance tonight. It will be me, John Radigan, and Mark McLemore, the Doctor of Defense, and we will have lots of analysis and post-game reaction to this one. We'll hear from the manager, Tim Bogart. Jim Knox will join us, too. Lots of post-game reaction and analysis. Lots of fun, too. It's a lot more fun when they are winning 9 out of 10, guys. Back to you. All right, John. Yeah, I second that. It's, uh, it is a lot more fun. Adam Rosales starting off the uh, bottom of the eighth inning. Kevin Chapman back out there, and he fires strike one. Rosales 0 for 3 tonight. Ground out, pop out, and strike out. And then he takes strike two. Chapman came on to get the uh, final out of the seventh inning. Got a strikeout of Leonis Martin with two runners aboard, but the Rangers had already retaken the lead. Wilder Rodriguez, RBI base hit. Pulled off the glove of uh, Matt Dominguez and out into left field. And uh, Rosales will reach to start the eighth inning. Probably an error, but not an easy play. That was a hard hit ball by Adam. That's it. Dominguez is a solid third baseman with good hands and a strong arm. That ball came up, hit him off the heel of the glove. And was not an easy play. The official score, Will Rudd uh, recognizing that, so that's a base hit. Good, good. First hit of the night for Adam Rosales. One on, nobody out. Rudnett Odor now will face the left-hander Chapman. Generally, that play, at least by my experience, is called an error. But as a hitter, I kind of like it when the official scorekeeper recognizes that it was a hard hit ball and not a simple play. Definitely not a routine play. That's a good call. Rugnet Odor, one for three, and he drove in three runs with one swing of the bat. That was back in the third. Takes that pitch a little bit low, and our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery takes you back to that third inning. Base is full. Rugnet Odor, a freaky fast delivery to the gap in left center, clears the bases off. And uh, that freaky fast all the way around to third for Odor, a three run triple. He skies this one to right center field. Maristic, a long run over, and makes the catch. That is out number one with Rosales going back to first. Now look that flies out. Now Adrian Beltre will come up, and uh, he will not face Kevin Chapman as Tom Lawless he is headed out to the mound. He's already signaled to the bullpen. He wants the right-hander to come in and face Beltre with one on and one out here in the eighth inning. Rangers leading four to three, trying to add some insurance and a pitching change again underway. We will take a timeout. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Leading four to three, and Jorge De Leon 
has now taken over on the hill. He's a 27-year-old right-hander out of uh, the Dominican Republic. Oh, that, not much of a track record, at least this season, with four games. High ERA. He's only pitched four innings, though, so anything can happen in four innings. Hasn't gone well for him so far in the four innings. Let's see how it goes for him tonight. De Leon originally signed with the Astros as an infielder back in uh, 2006. And tried that for four years and then decided yeah, he was better off trying to throw the slider than hit it. So he converted to uh, to the pitching side of things and here he is in the big leagues. Adrian Beltre the first to face him. One on one out. Beltre 0 for 3 tonight. Takes that first pitch high and tight for ball one. And Neftali Feliz, the Ranger closer. Get an opportunity again tonight for a save. At least that's what he's hoping. He was dominant yesterday. Beltre shoots one out of play down the right side. And the count evens and a ball and a strike. Beltre has had one at bat against uh, De Leon previously and had a base hit against him. Pulls that ball foul outside third. A ball and two strikes. Beltre asking uh, Alfonso Marquez, the home plate umpire, if that was a strike, and Marquez answered in the affirmative. De Leon with a high set, a check of first. And a drive to right field. Maristic going back in a hurry. It's over his head, and he makes the catch going away. What a great play. What a play by Maristic to reach up over his head and behind him and snare that shot off the bat of Beltre. Well, we've heard that he's a very good defensive player, and we've seen it, not just here tonight, but we've seen it over the course of the season when we've had a chance to play the Astros. But he goes back for the ball, went a little bit too far towards center field, realizes it, and then angles back and makes a beautiful play right in the tip of his glove. You won't see an outfielder make a nicer play than that. Beautiful play. Oh, very hard out off the bat of Adrian Beltre. Two outs now. And Jake Smolinski, who is one for two, Steps to the plate, and before he gets the first pitch, uh, Rosales is driven back by a throw. Smolinski, a single in the fourth inning. Last time up, was hit by a pitch, and he eventually came around to score the go-ahead run. First pitch is low and in for ball one. De Leon facing Smolinski. Jake trying to go through his mind very quickly, his checklist of things to do in this at bat. 2 0. Oh. Smolinski looking down at third base coach Gary Pettis, who's going through a series of signs. You got Adam Rosales over at first. Two balls, no strikes with two outs. In the air to center field. Casually moving over is Dexter Fowler, and that will do it. So De Leon comes in and gets a couple of outs, albeit a hard one off the bat of Beltre. One hit, one left. We're going to the ninth. It's Neftali Feliz time.
this series continues. AT&T U-verse reminding you that Chris Carter and Adrian Beltre and company facing off tomorrow night. Middle game of this three-game series. Of course, Carter having a great year. Second in Major League Baseball with 37 home runs. Meanwhile, Adrian Beltre this season enjoying hitting against the Astros as usual. 353, their record. So we will uh, see what happens, whether tomorrow night will be a, a Ranger advantage going into game two or whether the Astros will come back. And if they do, they're going to have to come back against the Ranger closer. That's Neftali Feliz. Well, we saw Neffy at his best yesterday afternoon in Anaheim. He threw most of his pitches 97 miles an hour. A couple of them had nasty movement, tailing down and away to a left-hand hitter. He had a great slider. He just blew the Angels away. Take a look at it right here. There's the fastball, 97 down and away. There's a slider on the outside corner. And there's the same pitch. Three up, three down, three strikeouts. Total mismatch yesterday. Well, Neptali on now to uh, see if he can uh, build on that, if you will. He settled for about half that. Uh, if he can, <laughs> if he can build on that, it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> Duplicated, I'll take that yeah. for sure. Well, Alex Presley, left-handed hitting DH, will lead things off against him. And the first pitch is high and tight at 96. That's a pretty good sign right there. Well, he's able to bring that good fastball with him uh, in back-to-back ball games. Presley 0 for 3 tonight. He's grounded out twice and popped out. High fly ball down the right side, and that's back into the seats. Yeah, 15 rows or so. One and one. Nephew, the 25 year old, or 26 year old, excuse me, out of the Dominican Republic. Coming back from uh, Tommy John surgery just a little over two years ago. 1 1 pitch. Two balls and a strike. Astros with Presley. Dominguez and Stasi, the first uh, three scheduled hitters. Belize back to the plate. And a fly ball to right center field, not very deep. Leonis Martin calling off Smolinski makes the grab. That was out number one. And again, with the uh, Rangers with a one run lead. Playing a no doubles defense out there, They're playing uh, very deep in all three outfield positions, so that everything is kept in front of them. You have to hit the ball basically out of the ballpark to get it over their head. One gone, Matt Dominguez, 0 for three, but with an RBI. RBI came on a ground out in the fifth inning. And Dominguez going after that first Feliz fastball. 0 and 1. That is good, Buzz, to see the 96, 97 mile an hour fastball back to back days. Mm -hmm. That's yep. a great sign. It sure is. It shows you, it would show you right now anyway, that he's healthy, that he's confident that he's healthy, and he's not holding anything back. Pitch is wide, looked like the slider. 1 and 1. Yeah, that's the big thing, Tom. I, you know, the hardest thing, I think, to get over. An injury is not the physical part as much as the mental part. Uh -huh. And when you see a guy doing what uh, Neffy is doing now, you're letting the ball go, you know he's gotten at least pretty well over the hump of is it going to hurt again if I throw? Right. And until, until you're able to let it go and not have any pain, then that's always in the back of your mind. Two and one to Dominguez. Police sets. And misses high and away. Three and one. Well, Matt Dominguez trying to get aboard with one out here in the ninth inning. Max Stasi, the catcher, is swinging a bat in the on deck circle.
Derek Holland started with the first seven innings plus. Roman Mendez worked an inning and now Neftali Feliz trying to close it out. Three and two. And Dominguez looked like he had to cheat a little bit to get the head of the bat through that one. Well, he had to feel pretty confident he was going to see a fastball, but still wasn't able to catch up with it. That's the case, Buzz. When you throw it 96 miles an hour down the middle of the plate, you can get a foul ball. You throw it yep. 88 miles an hour, and it might get turned around. <laughs> Payoff pitch. Line to right. That's going to settle in for a base hit. Molinsky playing uh, deep, and again, it was in front of him, so no chance to come in playing that deep and make the catch. A one-out single. Max Stasi now will come to the plate. Well, Dominguez got locked into a fastball and pretty good at bat for a 215. Line that ball to right field with authority. Gregorio Petit has come off the Astros bench and he will pinch run for Matt Dominguez. Well, Petit with very good speed at first. On as a pinch runner. He's carrying the tying run in this ball game now with one out. Stasi, one for three. Had that uh, double that almost got out of here down the left field line. Hit it high off the wall against Derek Holland. Makes the first pitch outside from Feliz. Neffy had retired 14 straight. Last guy to get on base, Kyle Seeger, had a single against the, Mar against the Mariners back on the 7th of September. Lee's okay is the sign. Check a first. You see that pitch right on by Stas. One and one. Neffy <laughs> peering in for the signs, ready to throw his 13th pitch of the inning. Almost hit it. Two and one. Well, Nephi's got the velocity that he had yesterday afternoon. Not the command, though. 13 pitches, six strikes, and seven balls. So having a hard time, a harder time locating the strikes on yesterday. He pretty much pinpointed everything. Mm -hmm. Now the right-hander ready once again. And the pitch skied to right field. Not very deep. Odor, a long way to go out. Coming on Smolinski and Jake Smolinski there to make the catch. And that was a tough play, even though it was not hit very far. And Smolinski playing very deep in that no doubles alignment. Had a long way to go to catch up with that. Unfortunately, there was a lot of hang time on <laughs> Stasi's pop up, but you can see where Jake starts from out near the warning track. To come down near the foul line, about halfway between first base and the wall out there, but got under control and made the play. And one more for Neffy to pick up his 12th save of the year, and he will face Jonathan VR. Switch hitting shortstop VR one for three tonight. That was a double back in the sixth inning. First time that he's turned around, he hit from the left side. And please. 95 and right on by him. 0 and 1. And a crowd of uh, announced crowd of 28,717. Majority of whom are on their feet. 0 1 pitch. All the way to the backstop and it caroms almost all the way back to the mound. <laughs> uh, Petit into scoring position now on the wild pitch. It's, it's it's not that far away from the strike zone, but when it's going 97 miles an hour, the catcher doesn't have a whole lot of time to, for his glove to go from one side of the plate past the other side of the plate. And time runs out at second base. Now one ball and one strike to Petit. Or I should say to VR uh, with Petit at second.
Foul back. One and two. Rangers trying to win for the ninth time in ten games. We're making four in a row in this ballpark. Derek Holland in line for the win if the Lees can get this out. Just missed. He threw him a good pitch because there's no way he was going to do anything with that fastball. Got it up and in. That's a broken bat right there if he swung at it. Borderline pitch. Two and two. On the way. To left field toward the line. Rua makes the catch. And that is a winner. Belize comes in, gives up a base hit, but gets the final three outs, and the Rangers hang on for a 4-3 win as Wilder Rodriguez, his first two Major League hits, his first Major League RBI, proves to be the game winner. His wife, Francis, his father, Guillermo, on hand to see it all transpire here at Globe Life Park tonight. Derek Holland gets his second win of the year. And Neftali Feliz gets his 12th save. Took two hours and 48 minutes here this evening. And uh, we mentioned 28,717 on hand. And here's the last out for you. Yeah, this is a pretty well hit ball that looked pretty dangerous coming off the bat. Fortunately, the Rangers defensive alignment had Ryan Rua shading toward the line and it turned into a pretty easy play for him on a ball that was sliced and hit pretty well. Neffy gets his 12th save, bangs his glove and says nice, nice going to himself. Derek Holland says nice going because he gets his second win. That's right. That's right. Well, the Rangers now have won nine of their last ten games and uh, everybody enjoying that victory. And let's go down to the uh, field where Jim Knox is standing by with a special guest. Jim? I appreciate it, Buzz. Here is Wilder Rodriguez. I tell you what, after spending 13 years in the minor leagues, you come in tonight, you get your first major league hit. What was going through your mind after that? Wow, I feel very happy after that. I, this is my seven I, I be, and I wait seven I be for my first base C, and I feel very happy. Now, in the seventh, you got the go-ahead run right after that. You also get the uh, bath right here by Elvis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Good job, Elvis. Welcome to the big leagues. What was so nice about this is your dad flew all the way in to see you get you out of your first major league hit but got the go-ahead run, and that was the game winner. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited to see my dad in the stand for my fair RBI, my fair, my fair base hit, big league base hit. Uh, and it's great. I'm, I'm very excited with that. All right, well, we're going to get you a towel right here. Appreciate it, Welder. Congratulations. Go get dried off. All right, Buzz, back to you. All right, Doxy, thank you. That's great. I love that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, part of it, I guess, huh? He uh, gets hugs from his wife and uh, father. Ball in hand, too, for Guillermo Rodriguez there. He's going to keep yeah. that one for him. Neither one of them care how wet they're getting either. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> that right. <is> beautiful. <laughs> the so pat. Oh, what a, what a scene that is. And There's some ice in that bucket. Yes, there is. That's not lukewarm water right there, boy. And it takes a while to get down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a great shot. The only thing that Elvis had to do all night, he, he, did, it, he did it flawlessly, didn't he? Oh, man. Oh. Feel there. I think that's a bath he will never forget. <laughs> oh, I love it. Something else. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. By AT&T, U-verse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. And by your Texas Ford dealer. The Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event. Now playing at a Ford dealer near you.
We'll take a break, and on the other side, uh, John Radigan and Budge and Mac will come back to wrap things up from Globe Live Park after this 4-3 Rangers win. <laughs> 